Hey folks, it's John with KGTropicals.com with my friend Dave Warren. We're talking all about breeding the freshwater angelfish. We're here for part five where we're going to talk all about raising the fry. Now the first thing that we have to talk about, and we didn't talk about it in the last one, was the actual development of the eggs. When the spawning occurs, the different stages of the eggs, what is the first thing that happens to the eggs once the, once the parents spawn? Okay, once, once the eggs have been laid, uh, it will take uh, two or three days you'll notice that the eggs look like they're moving and what that is that's a wiggler stage they're still stuck to the slate or the leaf or wherever they are but they are actually doing a swimming motion the parents will will come up very close and fan them with their their fins to keep water movement but uh, the uh, the fry will actually be wiggling the parents can at that time remove them from wherever they laid them and they will move them from place to place. So you just really need to watch closely to see where, where they're at because you'll come back and say, oh my gosh, they're gone, they were eaten, when actually they just might have been moved. They will stay in that wiggler stage for uh, a few days. The angelfish, when I mentioned earlier that you have to teach them how to swim, that if the parents are raising them, what the parents will do is they will grab them and spit them in, just into the water and constantly do that repeatedly until basically the fries have learned to swim and when, dad letting go of the bicycle letting his kid go. right exactly <laughs> and you know if you raise them you have to do that yourself right like i said he gets in the water he <laughs> teaches them it's 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 a lot of fun and to watch stuck in your teeth <laughs> <laughs> so all right so they're they get to the free swimming stage where they've released themselves from their little piece of hair that sticks them to wherever the spawning site was when will the, the fry actually begin to eat uh, prepared foods or whatever? Because they're not like discus. They're not going to peck on the parents and slime coat and eat from that. You actually have to feed these fish. So uh, when should they be ready to eat from the spawning date to when? I, I give it usually three days and I start presenting food to them. They do have a yolk sac and they will eat that yolk sac. Uh, I start the water changes almost immediately. So I put food in there and a lot of times it will just sink to the bottom. but. Uh, you know, within three days they should be pretty well. So from the time of spawning, three days later, they're free swimming fry and they're swimming around the tank. Right. Okay. Uh, as far as the types of foods, frozen foods, prepared foods, what kind of foods are you using for them? When the fries are, are eating, I do a combination. I, I raise uh, brine shrimp, so I feed them live baby brine shrimp, and I also use first bite that you get can get at any pet store. Uh, I don't exclusively feed either one, but you know, the brine shrimp, they like to chase them and they do really well on it. So I usually use more brine shrimp than the dry foods, but uh, the first bite works really well. And hatching live brine shrimp is a skill all on its own. Maybe we'll do a video, maybe we can convince Dave to show us how he does that, but uh, that is a, a skill that you have to actually practice at and get good at. So live brine shrimp, I, Everybody that I've ever talked to says it's the best thing you can absolutely feed uh, angel fry. And so maybe we'll talk about that in a future video. But um, now, as the fry are developing and they get to the stages that these are in the in the tanks in front of us, which you can't see, is there a point where you should remove them from the tank with the parents or remove the parents or whatever? Is that necessary? Well, if the parents are raising them, then it just, it's just standard fish practice. How many, how many fish do you have per gallon of water? basically. Um, you can keep as many as you want in there, but the more fish you have, the more water changes you're going to have to do and more you know, frequency. Um, I usually, when they get about dime size, that's when I usually move them to a grow out tank. Okay. And that way they have, have more water, they have more space, and they tend, tend to do better. Now, uh, my next question was going to be, you've already answered it, you've talked about it in a couple other videos, and that was going to be, are there any special water parameters for the fish, but I'm going to go ahead and answer that for you, and that is, yeah, but it's the same as everything else. We're, like Dave said in a, in a past video, consistency is the key. If the water is the same in all of the tanks, then the fish are going to be fine no matter what stage they're in. So we're not going to even ask that question. Uh, we've already talked about what we should feed them. This is going to be a question that I'm going to get asked repeatedly, and it's going to happen constantly. And so I have to ask you, People are going to ask me how fast do they grow? How long is it going to take before they're going to be 
dime nickel size before you can sell them? Well, if you're wanting to sell them, it's going to take forever. If you don't want to sell them, they grow really fast. <laughs> now, it is a long process. Uh, these back, back behind us are probably a month and a half, two months old. So, really, it is, a, it is a very slow process. So, if you're raising them to sell, you, you really need to establish so you're staggered. You have some in all stages. Like when I bring fish to you, what I'll do is uh, I'll do, I do call them, call them and I'll bring you the, the healthiest. But these all look pretty healthy. But I'll, I'll take out what I'm going to bring to you. But before I do that, I make sure I have something like this tank right here that they can't see. These are almost ready to go in into this tank. So it's a process. I, I should always have angelfish available. At the height I have, you know, 2,500 angelfish. Right now, I probably have three, two, three hundred, uh, maybe less. I, I, there's not as many in this tank as I thought there was. Just glancing back at there, but, but uh, I usually have over 100 angelfish just in case somebody needs some angelfish. So, Dave mentioned the word call, and this is something that we could argue. Him and I, we could. Uh, one of our eyes would probably end up being black because this is something that we could debate all day long as far as calling fish. It's a, it's a big hot button item, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to blacken his eye, he's not going to blacken mine, I'm joking around here, but that is a big thing of debate. There's a lot of people that say you should save every single fish, no matter what their conditions are. There are other people that say if there's a, a fish that's deformed or whatever and it's never going to sell, you should go ahead and get rid of that fish early. That's what he was talking about when he said call. If you're doing this as a hobby, you're probably not going to be all that concerned about that. Uh, maybe you'll have a tank like Dave has his magic 55 gallon tank over there that if there's one that's there's something wrong with it you can just keep them in that and, and everybody will be yeah, happy. Yeah, so. yeah, just for the record I don't when I call a fish it becomes mine and it goes into that tank and it stays there forever. I don't have to blacken his eye now. So, How's that? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you know I race fish for pleasure and I'm, I'm not going to kill one just because genetically it's not doing what it's supposed to do but I'm also not going to allow it to breed. But if this was a fish factory, which it is not, but if this was a, a fish farm and this man was producing angels to put food on the table, there'd be nothing that he could do with the ones that are not satisfactory. And so in those kind of cases, people and, have to do that. And, you know, jumping ahead, this will be a, something out of another one of these sections. But uh, if you start with good angelfish, the amount that you have to call is very, very minimal. Uh, pretty much, I would say, 90% of the fish that that hatch and make it to this size are sellable. So, Good. right, very nice. All right, well, that's gonna wrap this one up. We're at uh, seven and a half minutes, I think, already. So we're gonna wrap this one up. Um, on the next episode, we're gonna talk about getting rid of the fry. We're gonna talk about getting rid of the babies because that's one of the questions that everybody's gonna ask is what do you do? You have, you're overrun with fish. What do you do with them? And that's what we're going to talk about because this thing can lose control real fast and you can have a house full of angels if you don't have a good plan on how to get rid of them. So subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss that episode when it comes out. Thanks so much to Dave. Thank Say you. goodbye, Dave. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you on the next episode. All right. So I wanted to give you a quick look at Dave's brine shrimp hatchery. Uh, this thing is really cool. I've never seen one in somebody's house like this. So Dave, tell me about this. Tell me how it works and, and what it's for. Well, basically this is a five gallon funnel. I usually put four gallons in there to keep it from spilling over. I just add salt, baking soda, and then brine shrimp. In 18 hours, they hatch out. Now, one thing I, I do that I'm not sure many other people do, I start with, with very hot water because it dissolves the salt better. Let it cool down almost to room temperature before I add the brine shrimp. And since I've been doing that, my hatch rate has gone way up. So. Um, it's a pretty simple process. The unhatched eggs are at the top, the hatched eggs are at the bottom, and the brine shrimp are in the middle. So I just put something underneath there, I can drain out the trash, and then I can either pull brine shrimp out of the bottom. I tend to just go from the top and use a turkey baster because I can control it a little bit better. Uh, and I'm kind of anal that way. I like to have total control over stuff. We like to watch our language on this program, oh, okay. sir. <laughs> but uh, uh, it, 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 it's worked really, really well. I started out, like a lot of people, with a two-liter bottle. Then I went to two two-liter bottles, and I had three two-liter bottles, and it was never enough. So I went to this route, and I eventually will get another one and then run two of them side by side. But uh, it, it seems to work really well. 
One of the secrets, though, is brine shrimp on their own don't have all the vitamins and minerals that are required for raising fish. So I have a two-step process. I add protomax into there and then I feed them because if you don't feed them they'll only last about two to three days. When I do feed them they'll last two to three weeks. Really? So what are you feeding them? I honestly forgot what it's called. It's a it's a mixture of krill and and seaweed and a bunch of other stuff but it's very fine powder. To show you how little you you look how to use if I can pick it up this is the spoon. And that one feeding lasts four days. Oh, wow. So this will last a long time. That is news to me. I've never heard that before. This one drop does 50 gallons. So I just use a partial drop in there. But what that does is it, it guarantees that my brine shrimp are going to have all the minerals and vitamins that the babies need, the fry need, to grow. So. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a win-win process, and on top of that, it keeps them alive much longer. Well, there you have it, and that's really cool. I mean, not everybody knows that brine shrimp are, are, you know, live baby brine shrimp is one of the best things to feed fry. But if you can make it even better, hey, that's a win-win. So, and as expensive as the eggs are, you want to make it as as good as possible. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah.